Oh boy, what did I get myself into now? Elite Dangerous, I've been uploading quite a few videos on Elite Dangerous recently because I've been really enjoying myself playing the game. Getting myself to the Anaconda, uh, playing the Beta 2.2 Guardians, playing around with passenger missions, ship launch fighters, etc. I've been having a lot of fun and before I start off with anything else on this video, I want to go ahead and mention that I love Elite. I think Elite is an awesome game and it does a lot of things really well. I've met a lot of people in Elite Dangerous, I've been able to play with them in space uh, in various ways, bounty hunting, uh, winging up for different activities such as racing, etc. So yeah, I, I really want you to understand that even though I have some things I want to get off my chest. I love Elite Dangerous and I will support Frontier Developments in, in the years to come. I'm really excited for the future and I will be here playing and enjoying myself. But I am a very vocal person. There's a reason why I have a YouTube channel. I like to voice my opinion, I like to share my thoughts and I want to do the same today. So here's the thing with Elite Dangerous and Frontier Developments. Obviously Frontier released Elite in a very bare bones state. We knew this. We knew that when it was released over the years to come, content and gameplay functionality would be added. And so far they're doing a good job at it. But the problem is that with every piece of content that Frontier Developments adds, there are discrepancies. This is something I keep talking about on Reddit as well. Discrepancies how, you might want to know. Well, just look at how various things are introduced. First we got the SRV module, which would allow us to launch the SRV Scarab from our bay. Then they added the ship launched fighter bay, now in 2.2 beta. And the thing here is that while they essentially do the same, they allow you to store a vehicle and launch it, there seems to be no balance between the two. The SRV bay has a lot less functionality, but it uses almost twice the amount of power. That's very strange. Why do you allow us to construct complete fighters, but you won't allow us to build an SRV. Now you might say there's a different time in which these modules were designed and you just have to accept that the one bay doesn't have the same capabilities as the other bay and I'm willing to accept that but then I do wonder why is it that if I'm in my SRV I can't have my ship flying overhead following me in the same way that I can do that with the ship launched fighter. Why is it that the ship can follow me then, with or without crew, but not with them when I'm in my SRV? So we do have the ship launched fighters now, and I've done some videos on these already. I won't go into detail extensively, but I do want to talk very quickly about how these ships have a problem. Elite Dangerous is, believe it or not, accept it or not, the combat is build around vertical thrust fighting. You are almost never just in a straight line chasing your target. A lot of the times you are rotating around the target, going down, falling if you will, keeping your crosshair on the target. The fighters don't do this well at all. So while they have some speed, while they have good firepower, it is immensely tough to stay on the six of, let's say, a Viper or even a Python. Because these ships tend to just fly away from you, turn their ship around, using their vertical thrust to keep you in sight. And we all know ship launched fighters, they die in a second. So it's one of those things that gets introduced and it just doesn't make sense. We've got the Taipan, which is supposed to be the slowest ship, the strongest one. It actually has the highest boost speed. Where does that make any sense? 
you know, the, the fighter bay is just one thing. There are so many different things I want to talk about. And we're already five and a half minutes on our way here. Passenger missions. It's such a great concept. There's been a lot of topics on this already. People who expected more. I think we are well on our way. We've got portraits. Uh, we now have the passenger missions. But let's be honest. It is introduced in a rather simple way. I'm sure they want to expand it. But as with most things that get introduced, they are very dull. It's just a list of text and a portrait. Except this mission. Take A to B. Oh, something comes up. Take him to C. Oh, an annoying request. It's just a little odd. There's an interesting post on Reddit. This post is by ENC NYC, and it talks about the ship balance, the Beluga and the Orca being passenger ships, but actually not being the best at its job. Why is it that I can have a Type 9 filled with luxury cabins or first class cabins? It doesn't make sense that the Anaconda would be better at hauling passengers than a Beluga or an Orca. One of those things that just wasn't thought out as well as it should have. So there's been a couple of things discussed on, on the forum and on Reddit lately. Something that keeps the community in an uproar, I would say. Uh, we got instant ship transfers. We then got the vote for making there a delay there because immersion we wanted to keep it a little bit realistic while not impacting gameplay too much it's fine to have a discussion there and i i'm not going to cast my opinion i'm i'm fine either way to be honest but let's talk about something else that frontier development recently introduced we have the planetary surface map you can zoom into a planet and see its surface map they then changed it to make our lives a little bit more difficult they made it so that you have to do an advanced discovery scan on a planet before you could see it. So you had to be in visible range to scan it manually. People then say that's the way it should be. It's immersion. Other people say, come on, if you're going to give us planetary surface maps and you're going to need me to fly all the way to the planet, then it's already too late. I can see it with my own eyes. So there's the element of discussion there. I tend to lean towards the give us the damn surface map already. Now, one of the things that bugs me, and, and this is coming back and tying into the discrepancies that I discussed earlier, it seems that when new content gets added, FDEV doesn't really know where to place certain things. So, talking about the hood element, we suddenly have an engine startup sequence animation. It's in a weird place. It overlays part of the heading heads-up display. And... The actual animation doesn't seem to be in the same style as the rest of the hood. It looks different. It has more detail to it. And it doesn't fit. It looks out of place. Why is it there anyway? So I actually went onto Reddit and posted a straw poll. I wanted to know people's opinion on this. I highlighted that I think that its design is not in line with the simplicity of the other HUD elements. And I explained that it is currently positioned to overlay the heading indicator. So we checked the straw poll. We have 89 votes. 45%, the majority of which say, I prefer a full redesign of this animation. Very interesting. I doubt, though, that FDEV is going to use this feedback. Because it took a lot of work. And they don't want to bin it. So, beside the obvious thruster animation change, let's talk about its functionality. I have to hold spacebar. I have to hold my thrust up to start the engines. So if we have this added functionality, why isn't it always there? Why does it only exist when I take off from a planet's surface? Why not when I take off from a landing pad? And why not if I manually disable my thrusters and then re-enable them? Then suddenly it's just a check mark. Again, consistency. It's just not there. We also have 
another panel which is new the jump info it's really nice that when you activate a jump you get to see where you're jumping what the state is of the system but why is it again in a central location another panel we have other panels in the left bottom or the right top incorporated there in the same art style it's just a little bit weird people have been asking for shield percentages forever and we only have the whole percentage but now when we press 3 you can actually see your hull percentage and your shield percentage in a silly window about the helm. It's there just for information, I'm sure, but I don't think that FDEV realizes that they've added something here that people have been dying for since the beginning. But they've added it in a way where it's not intended for gameplay, just some info. Strange. The crew icon uh, that was introduced with the fighter bay, it was in a weird place. Now they changed it. It's in a nice place, but... Still, it, it looks a little bit off. Here's another funny one. In the left panel, we have galactic powers. It's in the left bottom, and it's got a weird yellow color. Why is it in a navigations tab? To find out where they are so we can navigate through them? If I click it, I get all sorts of information. It doesn't look like it's a navigation button. But then the weirdest thing is, if we turn to the right panel, I can view engineer info in a very strange place. Look at it. How come I have Galactic Powers on the left, Engineers on the right, both in a panel where they don't really belong? This is what I mean with FDEF adding stuff and just chucking it in there. And we accept it. We say, that's acceptable, it's not a big deal. Why do we say that? I don't understand. It's okay for us to be critical, even if issues aren't urgent. We want this game to be awesome and... If we want to make it awesome, we have to question these little things. Another one. If I'm in my SRV and I want to board my ship, I press 3. I click on my SRV and I say board ship. If I'm in my fighter, I don't go to my fighter menu, but I go to my helm menu to request boarding. So why is it for the SRV I have to be under the SRV, but if I'm in the fighter I have to be under the helm? inconsistency with two different pieces of the game added at different times the programmers they put it in they say oh this works it's acceptable but it isn't 100 percent right and i highlight these things and i want them to be fixed quality of life improvements maybe you want to call them that but i just think they're important a lot of the balancing is off with Frontier. It doesn't look like they have their minds in one place. Either that's because it's different people working in a team on different items at the same time. But then you would expect the head of the guys to say, no, 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 no. there's an inconsistency going on. Let's talk about how Frontier limits us in one place and then makes it easy for us in others. I'll start with the limits. We can only have one SRV. We can have multiple fighters. When I'm near my ship, my thrusters get disabled. Why? Just allow us to jump on the damn ship, all right? If I want to, I can anyway. Allow us to play around a little bit. Don't limit us so much. It's not needed. Let's talk about dying. There's a discussion going on whether you should lose materials. Again, I'm not here to discuss if we should have loss of items or not. I just want to highlight that I think it's strange that if I die, I lose my cargo, I lose my exploration data, but I don't lose my materials. Either lose it all or don't. However, I have mentioned materials are very grindy, so I completely understand that it's unfair to your time to lose that item. The same can be said for exploration data, though. In all cases, it's your own fault if you die. Why should we have a different way of measuring whether it's cargo or materials or exploration data? When I'm in my ship launched fighter, my ship can actually follow me. If I'm in my SRV, I can't. If I'm in my ship launched fighter, the ship can be a complete 30 kilometers away from me. If I'm in my SRV, it takes off and leaves me when I reach three kilometers. Now, this is another one of those points where you can say, dude, it's not important. It's not a big deal. And I agree with you, it isn't. But it's that little piece 
that's inconsistent and there's no purpose. I understand that in most cases, you might not even care if your ship leaves after three kilometers if you're in your SRV. You want it to be safe anyway. I understand that. But it's the option. I want the ability to say, I'm going to drive around a little bit, maybe five square kilometer around my ship. Then I want to come back to my ship, board it. No, 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 it's already gone. I don't like it. A couple of other quality of life things. A docking queue, it's still not there. Why? And the issue I have is that there seems to be a certain level of toxicity coming from the community when you do suggest these things because you mentioned they're not important. Module targeting was suggested by someone. Give us the damn ability, all right? It's not a big deal, but it makes it just that little bit nicer. Why is it that if I disable my HUD element effects so I don't get the fleshy windows, I still get them when the heads-up display in the center of my screen pops up? Another piece of inconsistency where that option certainly suddenly doesn't work anymore because the content was added at a later state. The heads-up display in the middle, it doesn't function like the other pieces in the hood. Let's talk about the rims on the side where you see your weapons and your chaff. The heads-up display with the heading is actually, uh, if you have VR, it's easy to see. It's a huge brick wall in front of you and it's stuck to the location of your face rather than fit in a certain position in the ship. They added this later. They took a shortcut. They added it in in an easy method. Very sad. I made some suggestions about allowing us glide mode, not only when you go near a planet, but also when you approach an asteroid field or when you approach a station. So you could use the glide mode to put yourself in front of the entrance of the station, even if you approach from the rear. It's cool. Why not give us glide mode everywhere? Why limit it only to planets? I suggested a rate of fire adjustment so you could manually set your rate of fire. People said, dude, it's not needed. Get good. Just press the button slower. Again, it's not about being able to compensate for these things. It's having the option. Give us more things to play with. Relatively easy stuff, but good stuff. It does look like Frontier adds a lot of stuff, which is good, while there is still basic stuff to work on, though. Let's talk, for example, about when you're flying your ship and the hard points come up, there's actually no bay doors. They're just not there in first person. They're only there in third person. There's a topic going on on the uh, forum right now about this, and people are petitioning to finally get this fixed. I highlighted that even though we are actually not in the fighter, we are there through this tether. You still receive the red out effect. And this is weird because they actually removed the life support system from the menu because obviously you don't need life support if you're not there. So I sent in a bug report saying we received red out in the ship launched fighter. And they said, yeah, we know it's an issue, but it's probably not going to get fixed in the beta. They'll do it later. They must be really busy, and I appreciate that. But... Disabling red out seems like a pretty simple thing to me. Then again, I'm not a programmer. I love Elite. I really do. And like I mentioned 18 minutes ago, I will continue to play Elite until this game becomes huge. Walking in my ship, having people in my ship, walking on planets, all of that stuff is going to be awesome. Immersion is a big thing for me. I've said it before. I I know it's not everything. But I do think that Frontier Developments is missing a lot of nails. They're adding new content. They're adding it gradually. But they are forgetting along the line to keep consistent with their methods of implementing stuff. Aesthetic-wise, functionality-wise... It just doesn't add up and it doesn't weigh the same with every piece of content that's added. I urge Frontier Developments to take a look at this and make sure that we don't end up with a game where one piece looks more polished than the other and while certain pieces should be able to do the same thing, they don't. Food for thought. Thanks for listening. Have a good day.